Hey guys, this is JujuB009, and yes, this is a Sun and Moon video, and I know there's been a lot of Sun and Moon development, and I just didn't feel like making a video, because the videos that I've seen didn't really go past the videos themselves, like there's really nothing to discuss past the videos that we've already seen. Today, the video went up that just created an even bigger uproar in the Pokemon community than they have been creating. Like this, like this video was huge. First thing I want to discuss is Sun and Moon takes 12 hours apart. So that means Sun takes place during the day and Moon takes place during the night. Now, what could that possibly mean? Like what could I possibly be wanting to talk about? Uh, wanting to talk about? And that is that Sun and Moon will have, like it, it was already, you know, understood that they have version exclusives. But what does that mean for the version exclusives? And what does that also mean for Pokemon that evolve exclusively through night and day, like Espeon and Umbreon? Like if I have Sun and I want an Umbreon, would I trade an Eevee to my friend who has Moon just to get an Umbreon? Like what does that mean for those Pokemon? And also. What does that mean for Pokemon like Alolan Executor and Raticate? Because if you think about it, when they released Rattata and Raticate, they showed them at night. So they must be only Alolan exclusives. But what does that mean? But when you think further back to when we got like the first Alolan Pokemon, which was Alolan Executor, and given how he evolves, which is through copious amounts of sunlight, what does that mean for Executor? So does that mean if I catch an Execute in Moon, he doesn't evolve into an Executor because there's really no sunlight for him? Because because there's really not that much sunlight compared to the sun sunlight, to the sun version sunlight? Or can you just not get a Alolan Executor at all in Moon version. That's those are a lot of questions that I have. And um yeah, that's about it for that. So type null. Like oh my god, everybody has been talking about like the helmet is removable and he has the arc from Arceus. Like oh my god. Like those are very accurate, you know, descriptions and those are very viable assumptions you know but one thing i want to add to that is that maybe he's similar to keldeo in the sense that he has to use a move you know what i'm saying he has to use a move for him to remove his helmet to become a different form you know like he has to use a move and then his his helmet breaks off or something, you know, and then he gets a different ability. Like, like I'm assuming he's going to get something like multi-type or protein because of everybody knows he looks like a chimera manticore thing. He has like this chimera manticore thing going on. And it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. That he's made up all the he's made up of all of these different Pokemon. I think he's gonna have the reason I say he's gonna have multi type or protein because multi type he has the Arceus thing around his neck, so he might. And because of the description that they gave in his um, in his bio saying that he was needed to conquer, I guess. Not conquer, but let me just look it up really fast. They said something that was really shocking about him about um legendary pokemon and oh my goodness hold up i'm looking it up right now oh my god okay so type null to complete a certain mission there was need of a pokemon powerful enough to rival those pokemon often spoken of in mythology like obviously they crafted him from some bull. Cause if you look at him, if you look at his body, 
Like, first of all, nobody knows what the heck that helmet is. Like, that helmet, even his bio, that helmet makes him less agile, which probably means that when it comes off, he's going to be faster and he's going to be a threat. But if you look at his body, he has the dog body of the Zygarde form, which I think is the 10% form. The Zygarde 10%, I think, is the dog form. The only thing is the little uh, hexagons on his legs are purple instead of green. I don't know. That's just something I'm assuming. I could be, I could be very wrong. And the thing on his back is like a tail fin, so he could be, like that could be for swimming, you know. And that's why I think he has multi-type of protein when the helmet comes off because battle armor is garbage. And battle armor, he only truly, really has battle armor on his head, you know. There's no battle armor anywhere else. But once that helmet comes off. My goodness. Excuse me. He is going to be a monster to deal with. Because if he is said to rival Pokemon often spoken of in mythology, one of them being Arceus. My God. So, with that being said, UB01 or Ultra B01. And Lily are obviously connected. We could, anybody with a brain can make that connection. But how are they connected? Because Lily cannot be UB01. Because if UB01 is a Pokemon, obviously people are going to want to catch this thing. And that's kind of weird to make a human a Pokemon and then you catch the human. And then it's like, how would that fare out? So I just think that Lily is just like a physical projection, like a physical mental projection of UB01. Like I'm predicting UB01 is a psychic fairy, all right, <laughs> because it looks like a jellyfish, obviously, a psychic transparent jellyfish thing, and it could possibly be fairy, and the description that they give it, it moves like a little girl. And I think that's why it took the projection on as Lily, because Lily's a little girl. Or maybe Lily may have been raised by this Pokemon. And the reason she doesn't like battling could be that it's a mental projection of UB01, and it doesn't like to battle or use other Pokemon to battle for it. Or that because Lily had seen UB01 battling Pokemon and they didn't like it, which is why they're no longer together. I don't know. It's just crazy. Because she plays a very important role. So she may be the reason that UB01 shows up. At all. Now. I don't know. Like obviously I don't know if any of these things are true. It's all speculation at this point. But these are. like I'm. Hopefully I'm bringing up really good points. That you guys should be thinking about. Now, Team Ether and Gladion. Oh my god. If you go back to Type Null, Type Null looks like a gladiator. And then Gladion's name is kind of a variation of the word gladiator. Because Type Null's helmet is kind of like a Roman knockoff kind of thing. Because the giant axe on the top of his head looks like the little Roman tuft. The tuft of like feathers on the top of a Roman helmet. And his partner is Gladion. Type Null's partner is Gladion. Now, I don't know when Gladion will use this on you because I'm pretty sure you're going to run into him before the end of the game. Like, if he uses this on you, what the hell? Like, what the? Why would. You're going to fight a legendary Pokemon. So you're either going to fight this legendary Pokemon. Well, it's probably not legendary. You're going to fight this Pokemon. And he's going to wreck you. And something will be set in motion because he was supposed to wreck you. Or he's going to use it later on in the game. Kind of like how in black and white when um you chose like Reshiram or Zekrom and N used the other version. 
to fight you to see who is better. So he's probably going to whip it out after you catch the sun or moon legendary and he's going to fight you after that. And Team Ether, like, I don't want to talk about Wick. I almost called her Thick. I don't want to talk about Wick because I know this is going to be a an absurd amount of Rule 34 <laughs> art of her. I've already seen one, and I'm just afraid. I don't want this game to be ruined <laughs> by like by that. So I'm just gonna not even look her up until the game comes out and the game is over. So Lusamine and Gladion. Now, why would they release these two characters who are in two different groups at the same time? Because these are the only two characters that look the same. Faba. I was close enough. So, what these three characters have in common is that blonde, like, we already made the connection, blonde hair, blue eyes. Now, I'm thinking Faba is probably, like, the dad of Luzamine, and Luzamine is probably the brother of Gladion. Because if you look at Lucimine and Gladion's hair, it's all sharp, and they have those lines in them. It's just, I don't know. Like, I hope you're seeing the connection that I'm making here. But if you look at Lucimine and Gladion, they look very related. Not only because of the characteristics, but because their hair. And I think they're related. Now stay with me. Like, this is what I think happened. Like, Gladion wasn't a part of the Aether Foundation. But he was there while Lusamine and Fabo were doing all these things like helping Pokemon, caring for Pokemon that were hurt. But Gladion probably used the technology of the Aether, of the Aether Foundation to create Type Null. And the reason he created Type Null was to become a trial captain. And we all know Team Skull are just a bunch of degenerates who fail at becoming team or trial captains. So he probably used that technology to make Type Null and he and somehow the helmet is used to control it. Because why would a little kid be able to control a legendary Pokemon? Actually, if you think about all the Pokemon games, you're a ten year old capture a Mewtwo or whatever <clears throat> but really think about it you know like Gladion probably used their technology to create type null and then they wanted nothing to do with it so they kicked him out and feeling lost and abandoned him and type null tried to become trial captains and since they failed or they probably didn't fail they probably succeeded with flying color they probably whooped his butt but the Ether Foundation told them what happened, and they were like, no, we can't let you be a trial captain because of what you've done, because of what you do to Pokemon. And because of that, Team Skull brought him in and, long story short, he's just in Team Skull. <laughs> like, I don't think he's the leader, I just think he's like the muscle. Because if you think about it, everybody in Team Skull is pretty, like, around the same age. And Gladion looked like the youngest person there. Like, he just recently joined Team Skull. Like, he hasn't been with Team Skull for that long. But he's been around long enough that he has made a place for himself as... Um as the enforcer actually he's not even part of team skull he just lends his strength to team skull because i guess team skull just causes a lot of trouble so he's willing to help them <clears throat> excuse me out of regard to his father and sister i don't know it's just a lot of speculation we'll just probably have to wait till the next video or when the game actually comes out but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like, um, if you like, subscribe for more content like this. 
and like the give the video a thumbs up if you liked it share it across multiple media platforms whatever but there's just like this game is bigger than just like when you think about it, it's like this game is just a square cartridge and this square cartridge has such an immense story and <laughs> character base inside of it it's like it boggles my mind but yeah guys thank you for watching and peace out